Right. So, Kushbu, um, first things first. Uh, see, like you rightly mentioned, COVID has happened. Uh, you know, so there is there is uh, let's say no second thought about it. And uh, obviously, uh, it it was not a very pleasant uh, experience for most of us. Uh, but I think uh, you know, as they say, 
a uh, life is unpredictable you know it is not for the first time that in probably in you know all of us in our lives would have experienced something unpleasant or unexpected you know things happen and uh, usually uh, you know it is a surprise when that happens so the only thing that uh, you know basically one can do uh, in this scenario uh, you know especially from a job seeker standpoint or probably somebody uh, who feels uh, let's say a uh, negative about their current situation in the job or career uh, you know or any related things uh, so first is uh, you know let us understand that this too shall pass you know it is not uh, it, is, it is not a permanent uh, let's say scenario uh, and uh, this also reminds me of of a very beautiful uh, you know story i'll just uh, leave it as a small example uh, you know so once Uh, this wise king he asked one of his ministers that uh, you know you have to tell me one such thing only one thing which when i tell to a person who is happy makes him sad and the same thing when i tell you know that same person who is uh, sad it makes him happy you know what was the minister's response the minister's response was you tell them this too shall pass you know so if you are happy even that phase is going to pass and there will be change if you are unhappy you know it is going to change uh, so like uh, you know we have day and night uh, you know like we have sunrise and sunset this is this is a part of the nature and hence it is best that first we acknowledge it we accept it and the next immediate step is root cause analysis you know so uh in this context we need to understand what is causing us to worry you know like you briefly mentioned in your question itself for some the root cause could be i have already lost my job you know so that's right. one situation for somebody else it could be just the fear of potentially losing the job you know that's second uh, third is i have lost my job uh, and i do not even have enough runway to survive you know so that's a third scenario so see all these scenarios are different and therefore the combat plan you know the action plan to you know win over this situation has to be different and it it has to be tailored to what is your personal root cause and everybody's root cause usually will be different you know because you cannot just generalize things that you know because market is negative or some company you know was forced to retrench therefore i will also get retrench or my colleague got retrench therefore i will get retrench so on and so forth or my batchmate did not get a job and therefore people are saying that you know it is a tough market for fresh graduates so i will also not get a job it is not like that you you cannot generalize things so first uh, you know accept second is find out the root cause third is based on that root cause you plan your next action you know so let's say if if you have enough runway for next 3 to 6 months or one year to survive then you plan differently then you see what can i do within that time frame within that runway to again get back in action and if you do not have a runway you know then it is about survival boss then you got to be very very creative and very open in terms of accepting or exploring whatever comes your way uh, or probably actually reaching out to you know get something which can get you going and it can be as simple as one positive thought so you know in this whole scheme of negative things you just have to find one good reason and one small starting point from where you can initiate your journey and then you know you plan and you execute as you go you know don't don't think of an eventual scenario you know so start small just go ahead with whatever uh, is doable today absolutely karanjit i think uh, a piece of sunshine i mean even a slight bit of sunshine in a dark night is is a huge value and that yeah. could be as simple as a smile of a child or your own family members or just walking down the nature aisle or even as simple as just going out and experiencing love for oneself which can yeah. make you feel happy about oneself I think I'm just very well, and I just want to emphasize on one thing which you, though you mentioned a lot of things, but I would like to bring attention to the fact of generalizing because the fact is, if one didn't get it, 
doesn't mean you would and if one won the better battle also doesn't mean you will win it it's not the same person it's not the same situation it's not the same timing so just living the life based on how it's going on for other people is not the right way in and one of the biggest examples at this point of time is the covid situation if one person is scared and is expressing the feeling of fear the other person doesn't have to feel the same fear he can right. work on that person and bring him out of that fear rather than shaking hands on that fear and increasing it exponentially or by times and Absolutely. this can actually bring in lots of growth for the society because i was just reading through karanji the other day and it and the the i think it was howard review that came up with this which was we have jumped the digital evolution by 7 years which means we fast track by digital transformation for 7 years which is a huge deal not a right. small thing and with this i think so much so we are going to discover because you've mentioned about people going through different mindsets definitely yep. i'm going to discover from you how people can manage those mindsets and what are those with this karunji can i actually let's reflect on what's exactly a winning mindset i know our topic says that and you believe in that big time so what is the concept of this winning mindset how is it different from any other mindset right so uh, let me let me take you all back to 1950s uh, okay. i would love that let's do that you know in in that in that era uh, there was uh, so uh, you know dr uh, earl nightingale he basically uh, he basically came up with a research and he recorded it uh, and it is called the strangest secret you know so what is that strangest secret the strangest secret says in 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 a nutshell in summary that people with a winning mindset uh they basically attract uh you know all the good things uh, towards them they have that power and based on you know this uh let's say study or whatever his findings were there was a research uh, you know conducted uh, by dr munro uh, keeper uh, you know so he is also a renowned psychologist and uh, one of the best selling authors uh, of few books on psychology uh so you know this research very interestingly and by the way it was not a uh, let's say a quick fix short kind of research this research was carried out over a span of 12 years you know so it is like more than a decade this research went on and uh, it included the study and analysis of uh, the lives uh, the the generations uh you know the biographies the autobiographies the lifestyle you know the children the you know families uh, of uh, self made millionaires you know or of high performing athletes or of olympic medalists or of businessmen or legends or you know basically a, a lot of uh, renowned scientists as well so what what came out of this research you know what is what is the summary uh, of findings of this research it is very simple what it says is all these people who were successful or on top of their game in whatever respective field they were you know whether they were sportsmen whether they were businessmen right. uh, academicians scientists they had you know these uh, four key traits uh, or four key uh characteristics or behavior which is typically you know the mindset that they had uh, to approach life in a certain way so what is the first finding or first learning the first learning is all these people they leveraged or capitalized upon their natural strength or genetic strength so either you know it was there in their genes uh, in some form you know not necessarily in exactly the same form which they are using it today Uh, or it was their natural talent so you see typically uh, you know when we meet a lot of people generally uh, you know 8 out of 10 people that you meet probably would tell you or probably would make you feel uh, that they are not happy doing what they are doing uh, you know and only two of them would be like 
okay you know i am loving it i am thinking it and uh, you know i am taking this forward i am very happy in what i am doing i have plans so you know this clearly is a sign that people who are naturally uh, utilizing their strengths or working on their strengths or you know any genetic uh, capability they are tend to enjoy their work more and therefore you know they are tend to excel in their field more so this is the first learning second learning is uh, these people they have a positive mindset they have that can do approach Absolutely. they it makes a huge difference there right so they they think of what can happen and not you know what cannot happen or what should not happen they don't think of worries they think of positivity that right? okay if i do this this is you know this is what will happen or this is what i want to make uh, you know it happens so that's that's their mindset so this is the second clear uh, you know study third is they have a very good understanding uh, you know of how their own mind operates and therefore they are able to to a large extent control their own mind so see there there usually you will find again two types of people uh, one set is uh people who are controlled by their mind who are prisoners or victims of their mind you know to them everything is about worry everything is about negativity everything is about pessimism and then you will have another set of people which are of course very fewer in number who you know have a very different thought process uh, again and they understand that this is how i can leverage my mindset to at least take certain steps which will help me in a longer term you know which will help me define or probably even redefine my destiny uh, you know so they work with that approach absolutely i think anj very well crafted because um, i think the whole idea is to be able to think in a very motivating and inspiring manner for oneself and not try to drain in that loop of negativity which actually at the end of end of the day it drains you even i think overthinking is one of the things which actually um is not classified under winning mindset and uh, i'm so glad you actually went ahead to classify with three different heads and all three of them i think i personally can resonate believe the audiences will also resonate with it because guys when you wake up with that heavy mind and when you wake up with that thought of oh no today is again a long day or i have to do this i have to... don't you think that sense of disheartenment the entire day on and on the other side on the other side when you wake up with that yes i'm going to rock the day it's going to be amazing i have so much to achieve today and i'm going to finish all of the things and it's going to be phenomenal my day going to end with my beautiful family dinner which i have been expecting for so long guys which one would you want to take the one with the heavy thought or one with the excitement with the sense of more achievements to do because all of us have the same choice it's just on us which one are we going to pick guys why don't you tell me in the comment section which one will you go for the one which drains you so you can commend negativity or drain or the second which is the positive mindset or an inspiring mindset which gets you going the entire day and you can just phenomenally perform even if the things are not going your way tell me in the comment section please 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 we love it also guys a quick shout out why don't you go ahead and share the video please share 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 as much as you share whatever kanji is sharing with us today more people will get to know and we will be able to spread the value of how they can be the top of their career game today so coming back to karanjit karanjit thank you so much for sharing that winning mindset let's you you mentioned let's go back in 1950s i'm thinking not that back but a little back by when you were in your 20s let's hear your story i mean Karunjit, uh, just to let my audience know, so guys, Karunjit comes from India, and uh, and he has been he's he's born in a small town, have traveled to different cities, growing up, uh, brought up in boarding school, but today he's based in Malaysia for the past seven to eight years, as I'm approximately putting a, a number to that, 
and has been rocking the APAC region for more than approximately 10 years. Is And you are an entrepreneur right now. There has been a transition from a corporate life to a startup life. So tell us about your story. Tell us how did this happen and uh, were you expecting to be where you are at the moment? So, well, uh, see, obviously, if, if I go back, uh, uh, you know, let's say 15, 20 years. Uh, so obviously, uh, there are two two ways of look at it. Uh, if you ask me, was I expecting to be, let's say, uh, you know, co-founder of Psyche? The answer is definitely no. Uh, you know, because uh, we learn the life, uh, you know, teaches you along the way. Tell us, were you expecting to be a founder, I mean, a co-founder, which is a founding member as well. I mean, to any company, were you thinking of being an entrepreneur in down the line? Was this back of your mind in the early days? Uh, see, uh, I'll, I'll try to put it in uh, a slightly different perspective. So what I always yeah. had in mind or what I still have in mind is uh, to create a story, uh, you know, to leave a legacy. So that has always been my inspiration. Now you may ask why. Uh, see, again, like you rightly mentioned, I come from a very small town uh, back in yeah. India. And, uh, uh, you know, I was born uh, in a family uh, which is which was a very normal, uh, you know, middle class family. My, my dad used to be uh, in the Indian Air Force uh, and, uh, you know, my mom was a homemaker. So uh, that is how the life uh, started. But then obviously, if I look back, there have been few defining moments, uh, you know, and, and it is only in retrospection. So, uh, you know, you, you, when you retrospect, you, you probably understand that, yes, uh, you know, this, uh, this is probably what was planned for you, or this is probably what you were always working towards, uh, you know, subconsciously. So first defining moment was, uh, as you rightly mentioned, going to the Sanic school, the boarding school, uh, which at a very early age, so I was at, uh, I was 10 years old and I was in a boarding school, you know, so that really, at a very early age, uh, made me uh, quite independent, uh, you know, in, in yeah. the way I thought, the way I started living my life. Uh, and it also, uh, you know, gave me a very different type of sincerity towards, uh, you know, myself. Because I knew that, see, the life is not easy. You know, it was, I mean, for me, it started being tough right at that stage itself. In every sense, you get up at, uh, you know, 5 a.m. and you are still ending your day at 10.30 and, it, it, you know, it, it's a busy thing. So that was first. And then obviously, uh, you know, like I like I mentioned, uh, I come from a very humble family. So yeah. that always, uh, you know, gave me uh, that fire. Uh, you know, I always, uh, I looked at, uh, you know, my family. I looked at myself. I looked at, you know, the world around us. And I was always like, no, uh, you know, this has got to change and I have to change it. And, uh, you know, the next generation, whatever it is, uh, we have to set an example and we have to basically change the, the curve. You know, we have to move to a different orbit. So that was, uh, you know, constantly giving me fuel as I was, let's say, growing by the day. And probably, uh, you know, because of, you know, all these things and the way God would have have it, uh, another defining moment came in when I was done with my school, I was done with my, uh, you know, graduation. And then uh, while I was doing, uh, you know, my post graduation, I, I had this very clear thought that now, uh, you know, is the time and I have to get into something, uh, you know, that will be, uh, you know, like a, like a runway, you know, which will help us take off and, uh, okay. you know, learn and do big things. Now, obviously, uh, you know, if you want to do big things, uh, it is typically not possible in a very uh, well-defined kind of job. You know, so uh, what you really want to do is you want to associate yourself uh, potentially in an early stage company with great people, with visionaries, and then you learn, you know, along with them. I so, think I'll just hold your thought here because it's a great point that you've mentioned. And I want audiences to really put uh, we look at this because the fact is when you on the early stage of the career when you're highly up when you're in a space which is highly articulated though you get great exposure i don't that's nothing to uh, nothing wrong with that 
but the idea of being in a space where you can experiment a lot more in your early stage of career it actually lets to discover what you love because it's very difficult in your in your early 20s or mid 20s to know what you want to do down the line but the more you try which actually currently just mentioned guys it will help you to know where you want to be and what's your love for please continue right sure so uh, uh, you know and and that is why uh, probably it got uh, you know all configured that way uh, as a part of the destiny i happened to meet uh, this uh, great uh, visionary gentleman called navin uh, he is my previous boss uh, you know so i had met him yeah. when i was in my yeah. school he has been on the show in in season 1 i think that's that's interesting guys so if you want to see navin kumar's episode one of the phenomenal episodes we had with him he is a guy i mean a, a billionaire mindset i would just say that go ahead tell us in the comment section and we'll share the link with you of the video please karanji continue you had a events pleasure working with him about 12 years you were working with him right yes yeah so we we worked together for about 13 years and i still remember my first meeting with him you know i was still in my uh, b school doing my post graduation i was uh, you know so it was internship time so i was really looking forward to uh, you know doing an internship with a company which probably could uh, you know help with that kind of learning uh, and obviously i meet this gentleman he was there to uh, get a few interns for his startup back then so you know nitio started back in 2005 so that is when we had met and uh, i still remember that one line uh, you know the take away was karun if you give me your next 5 years i can promise you that you will at least have 500 people working you know with you or as your team or under you so you know that was the thing and you will be very surprised to know uh, what was uh, you know the the question or what was the a uh, statement from my side to which this response came so you know back in those days you know in b schools people always talk about ceos you know so that is the word you want to be a ceo that's it so somehow i don't know i also had that fascination that okay some day i got to be a ceo of a company and uh, you know the the only cv that i prepared back then uh, as as an intern my career objective clearly stated i want to be a ceo before i turn 33 that specific you know wow. the, so navin was like what is this you know let's talk more about this so then i told him see you know this is uh, i am really looking for something uh, you know with where there is exponential learning and there is exponential growth i i am not looking well, for the winning mindset we are talking about i think just with your example at the age of approximately 24 25 or what your age was yeah. with graduation you mentioned yeah. that you want to become a ceo not something you knew because you hadn't started your foot in the corporate world as yet but yes. aspiring to be something guys that's the winning mindset are you yeah. having that mindset or not please today is the day if that's something you're struggling then karun is going to share some great methods on how exactly can you start building those mindsets and karun i'm so glad that navin shared with you a belief that he was sure of and 500 people is not a joke and yeah. uh, down the line he knew he could do that yes so even i would like to highlight that a belief of an entrepreneur or a belief of a person to be able to reach to a certain point is very crucial i being an entrepreneur myself if i am not looking forward or if i'm not planning or if i'm not expecting the unexpected and preparing myself for anything that comes my way i don't think i can do justice to this entrepreneur designation at all because every day is a roller coaster right guys but right with this karun as you were sharing your story and audiences are all ears for it for the big question but i'm thinking why not we have our first rapid fire for the day and after that we go to the big question sure are you ready okay yes, let's, let's do it. let's do the first rapid fire with karanjit and get to know a little bit more about him karanjit very quickly are you rap- are you ready for the rapid fire sure yes i am so let's, let's do the one in which we we will be talking from your den 
which is figuring out who you are, what you do, what you love, and how's your day like. So let's get going. Okay, so first question. What are the top websites that you go to check out the latest trends, updates in your industry? CB Insights. Okay, not bad. Anything else? I spend a lot of time these days on LinkedIn as well. And then, of course, Bloomberg. Yeah, indeed. Bloomberg is great. I too spend a lot of time there. How about you tell us your next holiday destination? Uh, so, uh, I think Koh Samui in Thailand. Wow, okay. I, I love the country. A mentor yeah. in life who has the highest impact on you. Who has had the highest impact on me so far? Um, if you have two names with had and have, we are okay with that. Okay, so uh, I think uh, one is definitely Naveen because uh, he uh, he really uh, defined a lot of what I am today. You know, so uh, all the credit goes to him. Uh, and uh, the second uh, person is our uh, uh, you know chairman. Uh, of the current group, uh, Sri Govind Dholakia, uh, you know, because his his story is equally inspiring. You know, somebody who had to leave his studies uh, in primary school from there to a multi billionaire today, no formal education, nothing, and from somebody who started off polishing diamonds for people in Surat to wow. somebody who is the largest exporters of Polished diamonds out of India. Who owns, uh, you know, investments in aviation, green tech? I mean, it's a phenomenal story. We can, I can go on and on. You know, I can spend the whole night talking about it. Mm-hmm. And people, you know, more, most importantly, uh, you know, with people working for him for generations. So, uh, you know, I was fascinated when he, when, when I first met him, and he told me. I mean, we got to know during our discussion that he has got. You know, second and third generation of people working in his company. You know, Absolutely. so their grandfather work, father work. Now the son is working, and you know, the next generation is already getting training. So, Indeed. I think these are phenomenal stories that can just keep on exciting us for the longest period of time. But just coming back to our rapid fire, tell us one interesting book that you would like to give to your friend because I do know that you refer a lot to the books. Uh, the luck factor by uh, Richard Wiseman. Wow. We'll talk about luck later, but I'm sure we would. One moment of your life you're proud of. One moment of life. Uh, Actually, I'm proud of the decisions that I have been taking so far. So I would say, can I say myself and my decision? Why not? Why not? I think that's the winning mindset. We're establishing that today. Great, Karajit. I love you for that because indeed, if a person understands what he has been doing with no regret, phenomenal. I love it. How about you tell us one, I mean, of course, you mentioned about having a phenomenal life and stuff, all the decisions, but a mistake in life that probably you you feel it's a mistake and you could have done better that you would like to share in a very crisp manner. Well, I feel uh, I could have probably started the uh, being active on LinkedIn a few years back. I just started being active on LinkedIn this year. So that's this. (laughs) So guys, he is already feeling that. And if today you're still not active, then do remember it's time to just keep your seats tight and spend some time on the platform because it's phenomenal. One podcast that you listen to. Do you listen to podcasts? I'm not sure. No, I'm not really a book I read. Okay, then we'll come to the Netflix. I'm sure you do watch a little bit. So what are you watching right now? So very little, uh, just at times just to get off the hook. So I think the latest one that I watched is uh, one is startups and second one is suits. So these two. Wow, I love both of them. I have seen everything. I mean, I've seen the the startup, I have seen the suits and both are phenomenal. (laughs) Harvey Specter or I would say Harvey Specter or Mike who do you love? Mike Ross. Okay, I was guessing so. 
<laughs> and one animal currency that uh, you resonate with? Animal, okay. Lion. Not bad. And uh, last one wish that you want to over that you want to achieve in life. To to leave a story, to leave a legacy that uh, people would be able to relate to, people would be able to reckon with. Absolutely, I think Karanji, that makes sense because you just mentioned that you really resonate with story and you want to leave a legacy behind. Thank you so much for the phenomenal rapid fire round. It is indeed nice to know a little bit more about you. Thank you. So now, audiences, please share your questions. Very soon, I'm going to ask your question to Karanji. So, Karanji. Let's quickly get into the big question of the day. How can an individual really be top of their career game? What's your take on that? Please share at least three, four pointers with us, which can, which our audiences can immediately implement in their life. Um, see, one very simple uh, thing, again, from my personal experience, what I can share is, uh, if you really want to progress in your career, uh, you know, there are two, three things which are inevitable. Uh, you know, first uh, is your practice. And who do you do that practice with? So as they say, uh, to got to, got to, you know, if you want to be the best, you got to train with the best. You know, so without uh, Dronacharya, there is no Arjuna or there is no Eklavya. You know, so that is one very clear thing that we need to understand, appreciate, respect right at the very early stage of our career and and you know we have to seek uh, actively seek such mentors such people such opportunities uh, such companies uh, you know who will help you shape up your life who will help you shape up your mindset your thought process uh, you know second is uh, like in forces you know my my father always used to uh, share this uh, uh, you know saying in our early days uh, he always used to tell us that, uh, you know, if the more you practice in peace, uh, the less you bleed in the war. So, you know, if Absolutely. you are not practicing, if you are not uh, really working hard on yourself, you know, what you want to do and how you want to do it, you don't plan things mm -hmm. uh, in advance, uh, things are going to be difficult, uh, you know. So uh, that is, that's, that's so true. It's It's important for us to really sharp our skills every single point of time so that neither do we be obsolete and also at the same time we don't lose our jobs or become insecure because that comes from the insecurity comes from there only at this point of time but yes. with, actually it reminds me we were discussing about subconscious mind and stuff i remember you were telling something very interesting why don't you share that because i'm sure it will help audiences to stay the top of their game as well Right. So, uh, see, like we were referring to that 12-year research, which was conducted by Dr. Munro. So, uh, one of the key findings there were, uh, you know, the people uh, who really believe, uh, you know, they can uh, they can do certain things and who have that positive mindset, who do not have any psychological barriers, uh, they automatically start attracting what some other people call as luck you know so they already start attracting that that energy that vibe from the universe to their life so you know and, and to really appreciate uh, this we have to probably again uh, you know be cognizant of a few very simple things uh, first our body the entire human body is 90% uh, it is 98% it is made up of water and chemicals and uh, you know, there is, there is, uh, so whenever we think a thought, uh, you know, is, is basically a magnetic field, uh, you know, so that's a vibe. So each human being uh, has got a vibe or what we also call as a core frequency, uh, you know, in terms of psychology. So, you know, so if you try to understand the mind a little more, uh, because that's the key. This is what defines the rest of it and what you do. Uh, you know, so the mind comprises of, or you can, at a high level, you can compartmentalize it in three, uh, let's say, zones or pieces. The first part of your mind is the conscious mind. So, and because as, as the name suggests, conscious mind operates only when you are conscious. So when you go to sleep, 
the conscious mind is not working you know so that is number one and conscious mind is a linear processor it can only process one thought one concept at a time and third most important thing is a conscious mind has the capability to program the next set or you know the next piece of our mind which is the subconscious mind so the subconscious mind unlike conscious mind is a network processor it can randomly process thousands of uh, you know thoughts at the same time uh, but the problem with subconscious mind or or you know the challenge there is it gets programmed by the conscious mind so if your conscious mind is actively constantly not filling your subconscious mind with positivity with positive thoughts and it is you know as they say garbage in garbage out if it is only feeding garbage uh, you know junk to your subconscious mind there are going to be big problems and uh, you know the third uh, so obviously a, a, a lot of people would have uh, heard about conscious and subconscious but there is a third you know set of our mind which is the super conscious mind uh, you know which is also called esp extra sensory perception or uh, intuition or vibe uh, you know in 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 very simple terms so this super conscious mind gets programmed or gets fed by the subconscious mind so you understand the link you know your conscious mind feeds the subconscious and subconscious feeds the super conscious and therefore in the entire chain if there is a broken link if there is no positivity uh, then you know there is a problem however if you constantly feed this with positive thoughts then obviously your conscious subconscious and super conscious naturally starts attracting a lot of positive energy a positive vibe from the universe because universe is nothing but energy particles uh, you know so uh, that that attraction and that vibe therefore you know just to give you a few quick examples you know you you probably uh, when you when you go to an event you know i'm sure uh, in marketing branding you a lot a lot of uh, you know you attend a lot of events so uh, you go to an event and then uh, you see somebody you meet somebody you talk to someone for only a few minutes uh, and you know you get a feeling that it is not going to work out i mean this this guy is strange uh, or probably not even even before talking just by looking at somebody or just by the way somebody is looking at you your mind will send you a signal that you know something is not right stay away avoid right. absolutely so that is how your super conscious mind guides you and on the other yeah. hand you will notice or you will have experiences where is you know you randomly meet somebody you were not even expecting to meet that person and you just hit it off you know and you feel oh my goodness where were you you know i mean we were i always thought that you know probably there is something like this so you know these are a few incidences at times randomly you would get a feel that okay i you know i haven't called let's say my family uh, you know for a long time let me give them a call and all you see is you know somebody from your family calling you you know so you yes. receive that call in so other words i call telepathy so, yes that's natural telepathy which is nothing but you know these this extra uh, sensory perception so i think this is go ahead please please you were saying i was saying that the way you have crafted the chain of information you know if we if we put in the thoughts which are not going to give us positivity when we are sleeping which is the subconscious mind or the super conscious mind which takes some instinct decision as to we say the right feeling the right vibes or the right energy from the person i think it's all driven by oneself and that's an interesting finding guys so it's important for us to know whether we are guiding our subconscious and super conscious mind with the right set of information or not because at the end of the day otherwise all our decisions which are taken by the other two can be impacted very very deeply lovely thought there uh, karunjit i think that was a wonderful point what do you think about i know you talked about the love factor and uh, love factor being an important the important thing you shared about the book also and uh, you have, have 
had a belief that there's a science behind it. Now that's interesting because people usually don't say that. How do you think when people say, oh, I had a bad luck with this interview or it was not something that I could win or today was not my day in my in my job or at my work. And how do you classify that as science, the luck factor thing? Because that's so important for us to rock in our careers, right? Yep. So uh, let me let me, uh, you know, give you a few examples and maybe ask, you know, your viewpoint on it. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, let's say, you know, if if uh, uh, let's say we are in a bank or we are in an ATM uh, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, you see that uh, a robber walks in and uh, he opens gunfire and probably let's say somebody gets shot in the arm. Uh, you know, so now there are two types of people that you will have. One set of people uh, who have got a shot in their arm, they would crib, they would, you know, say, oh my goodness, you know, I got shot in my arm. What is happening in my life? Everything is going crazy. Uh, was I? Why was I the only one who got shot? You know, there were so many why people me? in the bank. And at the same time, now imagine another scenario where is another person which says, "Oh my, thank goodness, it was only my arm. I didn't get yeah. shot in the head, you know, or yeah. any other." Right, adjacent. You know, it could just absolutely yes. so right. So. That's mindset. And, you know, uh, Dr. Weisman defines luck like this. So what he says is uh, most of the so-called unlucky people or who feel themselves as unlucky or less fortunate ones, you would always uh, find them in a state of worry, in a state of anxiety. And what anxiety does is it overrules. Like, you know, at the beginning we were talking about it makes you the prisoner of your own brain, of your own mindset, you know, and therefore you are only thinking negative. You are only talking about what is not there. Plus, when you operate with this mindset, you only try to, you know, find what you are looking for. You know, you do not or you end up ignoring things what already exist around you and therefore you miss out constantly. You know, so there was another brilliant example in, in the same research. Uh, so, uh, you know, they, uh, imagine, uh, you know, a piece of newspaper uh, and there, uh, uh, you know, in this study, which was done by Dr. Weisman, uh, he said that anybody who counts the number of pictures in this paper cutting uh, will be rewarded. Uh, you know, so whosoever counts first, I am willing to reward the person. Okay. So, and, and it was done on a very large group of people. So most of the people, uh, you know, they started counting, of course, you know, as, as a normal scenario, as you would imagine, you would start counting pictures of different shapes, different sizes, different, uh, you know, stuff written. And then, you know, there was also one picture within this whole, uh, you know, paper, which already had written on it saying this uh, paper or this cutting has 430 pictures. You know, but now, out of the entire set of people who were looking at this, they saw this, they saw the comment, but they they assumed that this is also one of the random pictures and they never really took that effort of asking, hey, you know, it says there are 430 pictures, I, I got the answer. And right next to it, there was another picture which says, if you know the answer, please claim your $100. <laughs> People are counting, you know, nobody realizes. So see, this is what happens when you are not in the right frame of mind. Uh, you know, you, you can't really think what uh, nature or what your surrounding has to offer you. And you only keep looking for something, uh, you know, which, which is there in your head, but may not even exist. So I think this is, uh, this is how I would summarize it with these two examples, not going very technical, but this is between, you know, the so-called lucky and unlucky people. So guys, if you want to know more details, get in touch with Karunjit on LinkedIn and he would love to answer some of your questions if the time is right. Of course, he's a busy man. But indeed, Karunjit, that's a great share. Mindset has been our ruling factor in so many things. Um, just a very simple example as starting, restarting the career. We have seen so many times people in the mid-age, they go ahead and they want to do all together an absolute different thing. 
maybe a corporate guy gets into being a chef or a chef gets into finance or we had a we had a team member who has been into hr and was exploring marketing and today she's rocking at marketing so i think the whole idea of mindset being strong and belief in oneself can play an important role with this karanjit let me ask one audience question so we so guys i'm getting into audience questions heads up already it's time for you to give me more in the comment section so we got a question from our tribe member tk bharat and he was telling us hi tk thank you for watching i know you're seeing us he said that it will be interesting to find out from you what are the parameters which a person must have to get a job i mean maybe three to four parameters which is which can be about his capability and stuff which is to get a job okay so from a job seeker uh, perspective Absolutely. all right <clears throat> uh, see again going by personal experience so uh, what i have sort of come to understand is Uh, when i look at people you know because i have been hiring almost throughout my career and i still hire so uh, what i look for is something that i would expect in a job seeker so let me address it from that point of view so you know there is a simple framework called disco you know the, the dance form disco wow <laughs> yeah so uh, i hope it's easier uh, for our audience no, to watch uh, tk bhar take note on huh? disco i mean i don't know if karunjit is uh, going to ask you to dance or what it is it's exciting <laughs> tell us what it is uh, no no so what i mean by disco framework is so each of these letters convey or define certain characteristics that uh, usually all the employers would look for Uh, in job seekers and hence if job seekers are able to exhibit these kind of qualities uh, the chances of them getting uh, the job or opportunity are much better so d is for dependability uh, you know okay. so as long as you can display uh, that your employer can depend on you uh, you know for uh, whatever you are uh, you know whatever your talent or whatever skill set or whatever role that you are going to play uh, you know the opportunities get better so you have to have that dependability factor people should be able to rely on you uh, you know that uh, if i give a job or if i assign some work to this guy uh, you know i should just already consider it done it is done you know i i shouldn't have to follow up i i don't need to send reminders and you know i should just assume that this guy done so you know that is the level of dependability that you got to uh display uh, in whatever d yeah so that's the d uh second very important thing is integrity and ethics because you can be as brilliant and talented uh, as you want or uh, you know as you try but if you do not exhibit very high standards of integrity and ethics uh there are high chances that even if you land a job you might just screw it up you know for the lack of a better word yes, yes. Uh, you know you you got to be and let me share with you uh, you know a very quick example there uh, we all know steve jobs right so uh, you know steve jobs when he was very young uh, he, he was a kid uh, his father gave him a task uh, his father said hey steve why don't you paint the fence you know so the house and the fence outside the garden why don't you just paint it on one of the Uh, you know holidays so what steve did is he painted the fence uh, from outside and uh, he went back happy uh, to his father saying hey dad uh, i have painted the fence uh, his dad comes out and says uh, yeah you have painted the fence you know but you have only painted it from outside you haven't painted it from inside uh, steve jobs responses but who is going to see it you know from inside his father said son we will you know so that is what integrity and ethics is even if nobody outside is seeing you know what you are doing uh, you know but if you still do the right stuff uh, that is what takes you to the next level you I know think when we over here i will just hold a thought a little bit guys we know we have reached 9:30 and uh, we kind of always promise a 60 second segment but it's getting so interesting and garanjit is saying such amazing things i hope you guys are okay to stay 
tell us if you want him to stick with us a little longer and i hope currently you are okay to stick with us a little longer sure i would love to as long as the audience is here don't mind uh, that no absolutely we have got questions already i'm waiting to just share it with you one after another we would love you to share your feedback on that sure so you know and and the same story continue so when steve jobs the d you know, the i so we are in the next alphabet s yes so uh, s is for solution mindset and sharing you know so again so we are talking mindset so if you if you do not approach situations or if you do not approach work or if you do not approach anything with a solution mindset for your employer there is hardly any possibility that you will you know you will really be able to uh, make it big uh, you know because then people start seeing you as only coming up with problems and no solutions and another correlated thing is solution mindset and sharing because another possibilities you you could be a great solution provider and you have a great mindset but you don't believe in sharing you know you 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 feel that it is all my credit it is all my thought uh, you know and that's again something that pulls you uh, you know out of that game so uh, that is the s and uh, c is for curiosity you know so again uh, you have to be curious you know if if you are not curious if you are not thinking if you are not asking the right questions or at least questions you know forget about right or wrong uh, you know then again uh, that is something which will become a hindrance in your progress because you are living with the status quo uh, you know we we refer to i will add in here because we are currently hiring as well and i feel uh, i feel that's important to be curious and not have a yes mindset to everything you know as as a person who is looking out for someone to be a part of the team i don't want to send a message to that person that you have to say yes to everything we say as a leadership team we want you to bring in a perspective to a team or to the community or to the family that we are not being able to see i think that that's also equally important when it comes to curiosity don't you think so yeah and uh, the last one of course is the o so o is for openness uh, you know you've got to be open to learning you've got to be open to change you've got to be open to adapting to new stuff you are you got to be open to unlearn you know a lot of things that probably would have made sense a few years or a few months back but are no longer relevant today uh, so you got to be open in your head again so you know if if you approach everything with a very fixed kind of mindset and with with a prejudiced mind uh things uh, there is a high possibility things may not work out in your favor so disco you know just wow just so to do a happy career everybody else because it's not about tk bharat only i'm glad that he asked this question there's so many other people who is talking about amazing session and they're talking about disco uh dance and everything but not bad uh currently we loved it dependable integrity uh, it's coming to solution mindset with sharing it's about being curious and it's about being open i think i'm going to implement this in my own company next time i have these i'm going to say i'm looking for someone who has a disco mindset <laughs> thank <laughs> you so much this is phenomenal karanji let's look at the next question that i have i hope tiki bharat you got your answer let's look at the next question so next question comes from rupesh varma and he's saying what is the most important for the organization okay mission vision or values if you have to take one as a pick what would that be for an organization from rupesh varma hi rupesh thank you for joining us vision uh, because everything else gets aligned to vision wow so you i hope you got your answer uh, rupesh vision it is for karunjeet next question comes from asif ali and he's saying how can we deal with covid scenes it's it's too tough to pass through this one well uh, uh, you know like i like i had mentioned two very simple tips you know one root cause analysis why is it tough uh, you know why is it tough is it tough because it has impacted my finances is it tough because it has impacted my source of income is it tough because it has affected my emotional state of well being is it tough because uh, you know somebody close to me whom i love is suffering etc and therefore uh, you know based on this this root cause the fix or the combat plan has to be decided that's one second is the piecemeal approach you cannot 
eat an elephant all in one go you know so you cannot solve so that's a, one. yeah so therefore you cannot even solve a big problem you know as covid a problem with a bigger impact uh, in one go so the only way to solve a problem is to divide it into logical units the smallest possible logical units and then address each unit at a time you know logically uh, you know with whatever uh, resources that you have so i think if you just try to follow these two simple things uh, probably uh, you know it will be a much better situation or, or much I, I, agree. i agree to the idea of root cause analysis to, uh, to a great extent karunchi because i have noticed that people people are they are they are finding situations very difficult the challenge is quite difficult but the whole idea is to not being able to dig into what it is that's worrying them maybe financially they're secured but it's the insecurity of after 6 months what's going to happen you know it's not today but the six, but the challenge is how to find it out and personally i would tell you I, everybody has gone through something or the other in this point of time and just to share with asif my side of the story how i take care of situations when it just seems not easy not only looking at the covid times but i think not easy life is a normal thing to face for anybody of us here but one thing that has surely helped me is talk it out loudly with a person or with oneself either of the case if you can talk it to someone of course it's great but the person has to have a positive impact on you which is a very important role so you need to choose the person very wisely and if it is about oneself then you actually talk to oneself as if you're talking to someone else and that clears a lot of strings in your mind and untangles them and give you more clarity and in depth analysis of what you're going through so personally i've been practicing this and have been worked out quite well so far so for me so i hope asif it helps you as well let's look at the next question that we have but thanks karunji for uh, sharing this interesting root cause analysis 100% with you now there's another question that's coming from sarthak and he's a tribe member as well i'm glad sarthak you shared so his question is since you have been through the entrepreneurial journey you know it's never smooth how do we ensure a positive mindset during the downs specifically with respect to the early stage entrepreneurs see again uh, that's the whole thing you know the, sorry we just talked about it i know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and the answer lies in the question itself, you know. So when we already know that entrepreneurial journey is not going to be smooth, so let us accept that, you know, half Correct. of the problem is solved there. Once you, once you accept, you are out of denial or rejection. You clearly know that this is the path, and this is the path that I have chosen. So I have to, uh, you know, tread through it. Uh, that is one. And second, obviously, uh, is practice uh, or basically. working on our craft so whatever you are doing uh, you know you really got to be in your comfort zone uh, doing that so a lot of people talk about the growth happens outside of comfort zone uh, but yeah. i say you know you can really extract a lot of growth from within your comfort zone you know uh, well, let's take michael jordan what is his comfort zone he plays basketball that's his comfort zone you talk of sachin tendulkar what is his comfort zone he likes cricket he plays cricket he he can bat for 12 hours together what is his comfort zone that's his comfort zone you know let's talk about khushbu what is khushbu's comfort zone khushbu's comfort zone is branding marketing you know storytelling so that's your comfort zone you know so like this if we identify uh, what is our comfort zone and within that if we go deep to extract whatever best we can from within ourselves uh, naturally you know one uh, we will improve our craft and two that will in turn inspire a lot of people around you uh, to get you the support that you need so see entrepreneurship can be very lonely uh, you know it, it is it's always very lonely yes yeah so okay. and again one very uh, uh i wouldn't call it a bitter but one fact about entrepreneurship is uh it is all about people so as an entrepreneur what do you have you got nothing you know when when you are starting off you i mean you are probably bootstrapping so there is a limited fund that you have your limited runway that you have uh, all you have is your own skill your own experience your own talent your mindset to support you and 
at best what you can do is to attract the right side of uh, you know initial people who will join forces with you and help you take it forward so you know you all you can aspire to really be as an entrepreneur especially at the very early stages of uh, you know your venture is to be a talent magnet you know because uh, people join people people don't join companies so yes, if absolutely. if as an entrepreneur uh, you know like i said all you have is a dream and a vision uh, you know and yourself so <laughs> as long as you can sell that dream to somebody as you can as long as you can sell that vision and yourself to somebody and attract people the right set of people to join your tribe and help you move from there on the journey will be a lot more easier again i wouldn't say that you would not feel lonely or you would it, it, it's going to be a very smooth ride uh, see life is never a smooth ride whatever you do uh, you look at the ecg you know it is always it's a vibration it's never straight it's supposed to be like this karanjit yes. if it goes like this then there is a problem yes, then there is a problem so uh, you know i think it starts with acceptance and slowly uh, especially at the initial phase or you know even beyond uh, it is about the ability to attract the right set of people to to you know work alongside you to support you uh, in realizing the dream that you have uh, you know so i think as long as we can do that uh, it becomes a lot more easier absolutely i think i'm with you on that currently it's about the idea of being a lonely sport about accepting that it is not going to be an easy grind at all and at the same time about the idea of realizing your own potential and putting it out across your dreams and being able to sell that dream that's an interesting one because that's where you become an entrepreneur you know just to make sure that you people believe in it as much as you believe thank you so much i love that one let's look at the next question that's coming from Prasin Prasinjit Mukherjee hi Prasinjit he says what is the most difficult part of being a leader most difficult part of being a leader uh, is uh, you know you have to support what is right uh, so you don't uh, really go by who is right or who is wrong uh, so there is a there is a fine line uh, you know if as a leader uh, we do not have the right judgment of what is right and what is wrong and we rather let who factor influence our judgment of what i think there lies uh, the challenge so it is always very difficult you know you as a leader you will have to there will be situations where you will have to take tough decisions you will have to uh, you know decide or you will have to take certain steps which may not always be liked by even your own people you know people around you uh yeah. but in your heart uh, somewhere you know that this is what is right today in this situation in this context and this is what is right for the larger good of the company you know so you have to think like the captain of that ship uh you know and and you decide you for you the aim is to ensure that the ship stays afloat uh you know irrespective so i think uh, the, these are certain areas where it gets tough Uh, and people also at times misunderstand you they they probably also think that you are uh, ruthless or heartless or whatever uh, but i think that's uh, that's a part of uh, leadership so i think that is that is that is one and putting uh, putting uh, you know your people uh, before yourself is another tough thing uh, you know so uh, i i had uh, written it in one of my recent linkedin posts as well and i have learned it from uh you know my my current uh, leader uh, you know who i work with uh, i always get fascinated by the way he says this very simple thing that karun as a leader we got to learn to eat last simple as that uh, you know so if you do not have that kind of patience if you do not have that kind of inner strength uh, to really practice this i think that's another area where you fail as a leader so i think these two things as long as we can manage this part everything else is pretty much around it no i agree it, uh, it's those were so, some impactful words currently it's about eating last it is it just seems does seem very simple but not an easy journey for every one of us out there but at the same time 
if some there's a thing called born leader as well but i would say everyone has a leader leader within themselves it's all about discovering yourself yes, leadership is a mindset it is not a designation it's a mindset you lead at home you lead your children you lead your family you lead your friends uh, you know, leadership is about inspiration leadership is about influence leadership is about impact so you know if, yeah. if i to summarize it in these three words that's what leadership is about it's not a title it's not yeah. a designation or a role yeah exactly it's the influence and the impact you know it's about how many people you are impacting doesn't matter but are you able to create that impact and influence or not that's what is what defines leadership wonderful that one uh, karanjit with this with this we we do have some more questions but let's look at the next rapid fire are you ready for that sure we're going to do a simple and super fast rapid fire in which we are just going to take two words and you're going to pick one which you resonate with the most are we ready yep okay then let's do it karanjit head or tail round Okay guys I have a quick 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 message why not the audiences as well play with us so if i say day and night you need to tell us not your answer i'm not going to get into your den and ask you because i have seen you guys are very shy in that but but why not you tell us what karun jit is going to pick i think that's going to be interesting we have spent more than an hour with him we already know a little bit about him so if it's day or night Karan Chit is going to hold his answer for two seconds, and then you—that two seconds—you get to comment and tell us what do you think he's going to pick. Wouldn't that be very interesting, Karan Chit? Sure. Yes. <laughs> let's okay. Do let's do it. Let's do it. Then, so within the two things that I'm going to share, you have to pick one. My first would be speed or scale. Speed. Speed. Okay. Let's. Guys, so keep us in the comment, and I'm going to show your name on the screen. Whoever gets the right answer, uh, technology or sports? Technology. Okay, swimming or jogging? Jogging. Let's hear it day or night, because that's not something we we've just been guessing it right. So let's hear about day and night. Day. Okay, that's interesting. And uh, sunny or rainy? Sunny. Sunny or rainy? Okay, not bad. Mindset or skill set? Always mindset. Okay, corporate or startup? Startup. Success or failure? Success. Two thousand twenty or two thousand twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. <laughs> Friends or family? Family. Short term or long term? Always long term. That's awesome. Tactical or strategical? Strategic. LinkedIn or Facebook? LinkedIn. Online or offline? <laughs> okay online okay um wife or kids this is a tough one indeed <laughs> i know <laughs> you have to pick one and i may not even get dinner or probably breakfast <laughs> i hope komal is not listening to us <laughs> uh kids okay netflix or travel travel Oh, you would be missing that so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, success or failure? Success. Fame or fortune? Fortune. Last but not the least, India or Malaysia? Oh man, this is really tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Um. I can get that emotions for sure, Kanji. Thank you so much for that amazing rapid fire round. I think I loved your answer. And my favorite, of course, of all of them, being kids. Of course, I love Karun Kumar as well. But yes. 
uh, currently with this, we are wrapping up for the day. And thank you so much for sharing such amazing insights. And as we are finishing for the day, I would like to ask you one last question. Uh, you mentioned about you mentioned about your 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 journey of spending time on different platforms, and LinkedIn has something that has been just been introduced to you. And how do you think it has impacted your journey with Psyche? Where Psyche being a talent commerce, which is about jobs, which is about workforce and stuff, I would love to hear what's your take on that. Uh, well, see, LinkedIn, like I mentioned, uh, uh, though I have been a member of LinkedIn probably for the last decade, I mean, since the time they had started off. Um, Can I say something over here? As you were answering this, I realized we did not say thank you to our audiences for sharing those amazing answers. There were a lot of people who were guessing it, and many of them were right. Do we want to say a quick thank you to them? Yes, please. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot for participating and joining us. Yes, and guessing for Karanjit, I should say. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Yes, yes please, Karanjit, coming back to your answer, please. Yeah, so, uh, you know, though I have always been there on LinkedIn for a very long time, but I, I never was really active on LinkedIn, uh, like I mentioned, until, you know, late last year or early this year. And uh, I had briefly shared my story as well. So, basically, see, uh, why or what got me active to LinkedIn is, again, uh, you know, a revelation in itself. Because... Uh, we started off Psyche, we were talking to, uh, you know, customers, meeting them, uh, and everywhere we went, uh, you know, of course, like any other probably startup faces, one typical question or one remark that we always got was, we have never heard of you before, uh, you know, so that got me thinking, you know, my sales team is telling me it's difficult to sell because nobody knows Psyche, uh, you know. And likewise, it is difficult to obviously when when nobody knows your brand, it is difficult to attract uh, you know the right talent or uh, you know whatever you are trying to uh, do. So that is what really got me active on LinkedIn. And therefore, uh, and since the time I've been active, uh, I think uh, you know by the grace of God, results have been phenomenal. And uh, you know what? Uh, again, I would say uh, also sort of worked out in our favor is. Uh, uh, this COVID, uh, you know, from a business perspective, because uh, everybody had, I mean, typically, you know, most of the employers uh, had no choice but to go for online solutions, go for, uh, you know, something that is virtual and accessible anytime, anywhere. And that is where, you know, Psyche got into picture. And then, uh, obviously, when you are in a scenario where uh, you cannot really go for physical demos, uh, you know, which was the case until pre-COVID uh, era, uh, you know, so everything shifted online, everything shifted virtual. So that way it has helped us in a big, you know, big way. So you talk of finding the right talent, you talk of finding the right set of partners uh, for market access, you talk of finding the right set of customers, uh, even a lot of incoming, uh, you know, inquiries. So I think in all these uh, areas, the LinkedIn has helped us a lot. Plus one big, uh, you know, I think impact, uh, which has been positive for, the company is in, in the form of branding because now at least a lot of people know, uh, you know, what Psyche stands for. A lot of people know that, uh, you know, this is one platform that can uh, solve our talent and workforce related problems uh, in a much efficient, uh, you know, way. Uh, there are, there are uh, a lot of job seekers now who come to the platform. There are a lot of, uh, you know, suppliers or sellers because it is talent commerce, right? Buy and supply side of it. Yeah, I think that's that's true. I mean, I'm glad to know that the I, I love the fact that you mentioned about that people have started recognizing you, and that's the most important thing. So, guys, if you're not there, coming from a branding mindset specifically, the impact that you create before you even enter a room and people know what you do is what your presence on any medium on a very consistent basis can bring. And I'm glad you shared that with our audience. Um, yeah. Because at this point of time, especially during pandemic and COVID, it's the best they can do is not close sales, but build a recognition for themselves. Because as soon as people are ready to buy, they will think about you as the first solution and not anybody else. Because you focused on your branding at the time when it was not right for the purchase. You're right. And I think one very important aspect also is, especially in current scenario, when you are locked up, uh, you know, at your home and you are mostly operating outside the office. So, uh, 
uh, it is the convenience of connecting with the world in a real time city get the comfort of your home so there is probably uh, you know from a professional uh, or business context i don't see there is any other platform as good as linkedin today uh, you know that that allows you to do that so absolutely I'm, i'm with you on that thank you so much karunji for sharing such amazing insights with us and with this of course we are wrapping up the show for today but it doesn't end without our a special guest anil meghani to join us on the show so let's let's call him with us let's have anil with us hi anil thank you so much hey rin so much akash hi karanjit nice to meet see you again likewise how are you doing very nice first of all a very big thank you from the whole team of link prana stories for coming on the show and giving so many words of wisdom so many words of wisdom really so appreciate thank you to you all for uh, hosting us thank you so much pleasure is all ours so with this of course ranjit i i picked up quite a few means different aspect of thinking but i will leave that to anil to sum up in 60 seconds but now people know it already so he's a 60 seconds guy for the ones who don't know and why is he a 60 seconds guy he will tell us awesome. i'll do this very quickly as you said khush lot of people know about this i don't want to keep repeating but yes in sales i've been there for two decades plus and karanjit you've been a part of sales so uh, in sales you understand there's something called elevator pitch which is for 60 seconds so you have that time slot of 60 seconds to go and introduce yourself convince a prospect arouse the interest and desires for him our product solutions and of course eventually go and close that deal so that's the elevator pitch which you need to do and being in sales i've been doing this very often and kind of resonating that with our linkedin stories uh, when the guests come in and you spoken for almost 90 minutes now for us uh, real great words of wisdom i would like to summarize that in 60 seconds for wow. audience fantastic so if with your permission uh, if i can go ahead my time starts now so yeah. you really talked about positive mindset and you talked about a lot of studies which are going behind it so really love that i am myself a very positive mindset guy so guys be very positive you talked about something uh, mantra for progressing your career uh, which is three tips practice 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 so guys keep practicing that's very important I really love the way you talked about the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the superconscious mind. That was really nice. You talked about the theory of Dr. Weizmann. I actually went through it while you were talking. It's called counterfactual uh, thinking, where to a degree, how much you can think you are unfortunate in life. So that's called counterfactual thinking by Dr. Weizmann. You talked about really very good, interesting thing which I really love called loved called the SCO framework: dependability, integrity, and ethics. solution my mindset and sharing curiosity and openness to change and as the last thing you said as leaders we all need need to eat last eat last so leadership is a mindset and not a title and that's my 60 seconds for you and if i have to just sum this up into one single line which is there for the audiences if you have a different mindset you will have a different outcome and this quote is given by jack ma so i think we all need to have a very different mindset to have a different outcome So thank you once again Karunjit for being there on the show and giving those words of wisdom to all of us. Excellent. My favorite was this <laughs> mindset. I can't let that go without mentioning it again. Same here, same here. <laughs> sure, so it's the time to disco then. <laughs> Actually it's time for disco. But yes Karunjit as we are as as we are saying goodbye for today would love to hear how was your experience on the show. fantastic uh, you know so i i was quite excited right from the time uh, you know we we got in touch and uh, i think uh, it, it's for me it is also uh, uh, you know like uh, one of uh, uh, i wouldn't say the dream come true but obviously something you know on on those lines because uh, usually when uh, you know in, in a very candid way uh, so there are no filters it is live it's raw uh, you know if you get to share your viewpoint with an audience as lovely as this uh, you know who who is willing to uh, you know probably appreciate uh, you know the content that you are sharing i think it always means a lot and uh, the beauty of this is uh, uh, you know, we we can never go back in time so you know it has been recorded it is there and it it, it will be there uh, you know as long as probably we have internet in this world so uh, that, that, that's a moment of history i would say 
uh, you know, in, in some sense. Absolutely. This entire episode, guys, is also going to be hosted on YouTube. So if you want to watch it later, re-watch it or refer to some place, please do get in touch with us and we will let you know the YouTube URL or go and search for Link from the Stories on YouTube with the speaker's name and you will get to know you, the speaker. Like Karunji, look for him tomorrow, not today, guys. Give us some time. <laughs> <laughs> so yes absolutely but karanjeet it's actually exciting and as well as uh, i would say a pleasure to have you on the show of uh, for solely because i have known you for a while and your stories have excited me for such a long period of time and i've enjoyed every time you've shared some amazing stuff and i'm glad today the audiences could also see that and could hear that side of you of course time is always a factor but I'm glad we could share so much with the given time we had. Sure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Karan. Thank you. Yep. See you all. Thanks. Bye-bye. So with this, guys, we are wrapping up today's episode. I know it was, it, it, it just didn't feel as how soon we finish 80 minutes or so. I don't realize it. I hope it's the same for you guys because you are the ones who keep us motivated. You're the ones who keep us going. It's our 34th episode. Okay, yes, Yay. it's 34th. Yeah, I mean, the time we started, I didn't realize that it would go so far. Right. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, Anil. And I'm so glad we have come though, these, yeah, we've climbed those staircase, but there's still a very long way to go for us, but very excited as well. Coming week, Definitely is going to be some super announcements from our side, guys. Please stay tuned. Please keep on supporting us and show us your love because we need you. Honestly, we need you. It means a lot because this value that we're bringing in is nothing but a childhood dream of our own to be able to share stories from across the globe with you guys. With this, I'm going to reveal the next speaker. The next speaker is someone who I couldn't have imagined would have been on our show. And uh, I'm super excited to have someone for the first time ever from the other part of the world, and that's US. So guys, our first time we're getting a speaker from US, Seattle, who is none other than Naveen Jain, who is the founder of Vimeo. Guys, one of the biggest entrepreneurs. He started one of the largest internet companies, which was Infospace, and had done phenomenally well in America. He is coming in for that 60 minutes. Guys, 60 minutes. Let's be sharp here to share his life, his journey, how we can make it big in our life. So I just you, some, I just, sorry, go ahead, Krish. Just one line. If you want to not miss out on his episode, we are going to push out the WhatsApp group link, simple WhatsApp group link, which we call it as Tribe, the link from a tribe. Please go ahead and join us. And we're going to push out the URL immediately as we go live. Fantastic. That's really nice. And some few more words about Naveen. Uh, he's a real business executive, entrepreneur, and he's been there out in the industry to solve the great challenges of innovation. I think that's the key thing which he's going to talk about. And he's been founder of successful companies like Veom, you said, Blue Dot, TalentWise, and InfoSpace. Who could forget Info InfoSpace? One of the largest companies before the dot-com bubble happened. Yes. And he's a very, very rich guy. He's among the top American rich guys having net worth of $100 million. So I think uh, it's a great thing to kind of learn from such eminent personalities and see what, what they are here to say. But there's a I'm question excited. before thing. I am excited to learn from him and I'm excited to know his part of life and story. This this is going to be such phenomenal as an episode to go with. So guys, thank you so much for being with us in the entire 34 episodes or one episode or three episodes. Whatever support you've given us, it means a lot. We we are inspired to keep bringing you more and more from these amazing mindset like Karunjeet himself today. The, I mean, I'm repeating it, but it's the disco mindset. Keep having that to rock your career and make it to the top. Guys, 
positive mindset is all we need i had a mixed day but what kept me going is to just keep myself reminded that this is what i selected and i love what i'm doing and i'm going to do anything and everything to make it happen are we ready for 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 this ex- exciting ride especially for you anil yes we are ready awesome so thank you so much everyone for joining us on today's episode hope you a great evening afternoon morning from whichever part of the world you're joining in but guys one second before you go next week's episode timings are not going to be same as this week it's going to be different we're going to come on tuesday morning rather than in the night because guys navin is available at that point of time and because of the difference in the time zones we'll have to respect his hours so it's tuesday morning is when we are coming live rest of the information it's 7:30 yeah. am ist and 10 am uh, singapore malaysia time absolutely so to, for more information join the tribe guys till then sayonara bye bye take care good night Woo!